Hey, this is uh, Tilak. Welcome back to our Fast Formula tutorial. Today, we are going to start a new series of tutorial. This series covers grade ladder search progression formula. Some people call it salary progression. The short code is GSP. I might be using this term, like, you know, Sometimes I may use a, a GSP, sometimes I say a ladder step progression. So it's all mean the same. This is part of a comp family, is one of the modulin comp family. Uh, this uses uh, four fast formula types. The first one we can talk about is a participation and eligibility. The, form, the formula type comes from benefit. Uh, the, the grade ladder use the eligibility, the eligibility engine, or so eligibility setup. So the formula comes along with that. This formula type, we also looked at, okay, we also looked in, uh, when we are looking up, when we are seeing that uh, TCS total compensation statement, the difference uh, might be, the input values and that um, the context, the way we passing the context, number of contexts passed in. Uh, the reason is uh, the TCS based on person and the uh, grade ladder based on assignment. There's a one more difference when, when you are setting up that um, the eligibility setup. Uh, the TCS does not care about the assignment, so you can use any assignment, primary assignment or anything. But uh, GSP uses pro process the data for assignment. So you have to set up a, like, you know, a specific assignment, something like that. I'll show it when you are like, when we are, when you are like, you know, seeing that this formula type in details, so I'll show you where to set up, how to set up, how you attach that into that, um, like that into that uh, grade ladder uh, setup. Okay. The next one is compensation person selection. This is coming from um, CWP or compensation. Uh, all the product from the compensation use this uh, to filter the people. The same difference here, like this also we looked at while we are looking at that uh, uh, TCS. There's, the difference is the same. Or like, you know, this probably passing a more context, like grade ladder, GSP pass more context, at different input values. The output is the same. This you have to return a YR yen as a value. The same applies to rate eligibility also. The rate eligibility angel also look for a value, a variable called eligible, capital eligible. The value is supposed to be YR yen. That's what. The simple selection also same thing, but it doesn't care about the variable name, all it cares about the value. Either way, you are in, you can use any variable. Salary progression date determination. This is belongs to GSP. This is this only the formula types used in a GSP only. This is basically used to determine the date. Okay. The date supposed to be written in a character string yyyy mm dd format. Okay. You can't pass any other format. It has to be string and it has to be passed as a yyyy mm. Salary progress rate calculation. This is used to calculate the value. Like, you know, this is basically how you calculate salary if you want to have a, like, you know, whenever you change the salary for a rate, like, how do you calculate? That's a calculator. This is basically, you return the amount, numbers. Uh, you can use any variable, but you return the number. That's it here. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you are looking at the context, I'm not going to look at the rate eligibility context because we that's specifically for that. So when, when we are looking at in detail, we look at that. Okay. When you are looking at the person selection fast formula, this is the context used. We looked at this context when you are looking at the TCS fast formula. Okay. This is a very generic context. The only difference coming for a person, why I'm putting a person selection formula separately is the person selection has kind of four more context past it. Okay, this, the variables are definitely not passed in. One is a data collector agreement, HRC in ATD, date, uh, like CNRT data ID, our ID. These are supported. But as per my understanding, these variables are not 
passed, values are value for this context are passed to the formula, but it allow you to set up this value and that you can use that DBA belongs to this context, okay? When you are coming to the GSP, that four uh, contexts are not supported, remaining everything is supported. Okay, why we are having a compensation record type, that value is not passed in. That is only used in external data. The external data is heavily used in uh, TCS and uh, CWP. I don't know anybody using GSP. Uh, when we looked at that uh, first form that the previous session, like in you know, a series, that is at TCS series. We haven't looked into that in detail, but I'll try to make it as a separate uh, video for external data. Okay, we don't have to worry much about the conversation record type, but uh, the remaining everything is you know, date and effective date, end date, start date, create date, all you know that what it is, okay. Well, now we'll get into that participation rate eligibility formula. This rate eligibility formula is used in three places. One is a ladder level eligibility. This is as good as like, you know, person level eligibility because if a person is not eligible for ladder, then he's not, he's not going further to start in except one cases. Okay. The GSP allow you to process multiple ladder in a one go or one process. You can define a, a ladder set. I believe that's the right name, ladder set. I believe that's, I don't exactly remember, but that's what it is. Basically, you can group a ladder in a set, then you can process that set. If that is the case, like, you know, there could be a one ladder could be eligible, other ladder cannot be eligible, that, that possibility is there. If you are not using that, we recommend using a participation selection formula rather than a, uh, formula from eligibility because it's uh, the same thing since the formula that um, participate rate probably have a more context I believe so you can use that and that is also coming from a, the calm family that is better to use it because calm supports their own formula better than like you know supporting somebody else formula so if you are using only one ladder, better use a person selection rather than a formula in eligibility. Okay, in the eligibility, you can use all other eligibility, whatever the predefined. But in case we are using a formula, I recommend using a person selection over the rate eligibility formula for only the ladder level eligibility. When you are coming to the grade level, that's the only option you have. It. Because grade level, the filtering happens through only the, the eligibility setup. So you can use a formula if whatever that given the predefined eligibility is not sufficient for your requirement, you can use a formula, the grade level. The steps level is also the same thing. It goes to that the filtering happens through the eligibility. So you can use the eligibility first formula. In my experience, what I've seen in many places is the people are writing a different formula for every grade. Okay, if you have a five grade, I see the five formula. Okay, if you have five grade has got a five steps, steps so there are 25 formulas written for steps. In my opinion, you don't have to write that. You can group them into a, like basically a few formula, two or three formula, you can manage everything while writing it. Again, it is my suggestion or recommendation. I don't know the actual case, the actual requirement, then you are the better judge for your requirement. But I'll show you how you can validate multiple when you are looking at that, that um, the formula in a grade level step. So I'll show you how you can club multiple grade or a multiple steps eligibility into only one formula. I'll show it in the detail. Okay. Uh, when you are coming to the next salary progression date determination, okay. I explained the formula, the value has to be written in Y, 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 MM, TD format, and this has to be a string. This formula I used in three places. One is a progression transaction date, salary update transaction date, rate synchronization transaction date. When you are determining these three, there are a lot of options available. The basically start of month, start of year, whatever, whatever. And also there's a option for formula. You can add as a formula. Okay, the progression date is nothing but like, you know, 
whenever you are changing the rate, grade, anything, that it is also basically update the assignment record. So the progression rate says as of when that assignment has to be changed. Okay, you can, if that available, the predefined date calculation codes are not available, you can write the formula. The same goes with the salary date. Salary is when you want to change the salary. That's what it is. The rate synchronization, that is also salary change, but it's a little different. It is an independent process in GSP. Rate synchronization, what it, what it is doing, what is happening over there is, sometime your rate changes for some reason. Uh, for example, for the rate, the value got increased. Now you can run the process that automatically update your salary as per the changes of the rate changes. Okay, so now this transaction tells you when that has to be done. Like you know, sometimes we always say starting of month of the process, or start of next month, or start of that like you know, next year, whatever. Like or sometimes that you might be having a different date for a different grades or something like you know. This is whatever your logic is, like you can, you can do that. So basically it is used in three places. We look at all this in a detail. Uh, probably I may cover the whole thing, like this, all that in a formula in one session or three session, I don't know. That's it for the introduction of uh, uh, rate stop progression formula. If you have any question, comments or uh, like you know, suggestions, please put it in the comment section. If you like my work, you can like the video. Uh, uh, yeah, till I see you in that uh, next lesson, next uh, like tutorial, bye, thank you.